BioBalance HealthCast, episode 264, Cholesterol as a Predictor of Heart Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counsel. One of the major concerns that people have in the United States about their health long term is will their heart hold up and what is the status of their heart health what's the risk profile for a stroke uh, how or a do heart you, attack how do you monitor that how do you prevent that how do you take care of that if you have the problem and there seems to be a predominant uh, warning signal where, where doctors hospitals where, wherever you encounter the medical system look at a piece of information a piece of information and say whoa we have a concern here let's get on top of this and, and that's a good thing uh, it's kind of like in the Cold War when Russia and the United States were at odds with one another and everybody was afraid of an uh, imminent nuclear attack. The United okay. States defense system put what was called a dew line across the Arctic Ocean, which okay. was a distant early warning line that would look over the curve of the Earth and see whether or not Russia launched any missiles. Mm -hmm. And that would give us 10, 12, 15 minutes of warning. And mm -hmm. it, we had all those uh, civil defense tests where you hide under the yeah. desk, like, like, uh, <laughs> like that would help. a press wood desk is going to protect you from a 500 <laughs> megaton dump bomb. But, yeah. but we, we felt like we were doing we all something. We did it. So we, and, and buildings had civil defense labels on them you know, mm -hmm. for crowds to, to hang in. So the <laughs> dew line was the early warning, hey, alert, alert, something mm -hmm. is going on. But it wasn't sufficient to make the country safe and to prevent attacks from all comers. So we had to have a more expansive military system and a more expansive defense system to plan for other issues and options. Medicine is the same way. Mm -hmm. We can't just have this one piece of data and say this is the due line. It, depending on which side of the line you're on, you're either safe or at risk for a heart attack or a stroke. Right. So, so those the, are helpful. That test is the cholesterol test. The test is the cholesterol, cholesterol test. test. Testing your cholesterol, total cholesterol, LDL, the bad one, cholesterol, and saying, oh, your cholesterol's up. But the test You're comes out as a total cholesterol. Total cholesterol, but it also comes out like, as oh my gosh. But they the have LDL. Subset data. Mm -hmm. They now give it all at once. You don't just okay. get the total. So you had an issue with that in a, in a recent cholesterol test that you took. Yeah. I, I, um, I had high cholesterol before I started my my um, pellets, my mm -hmm. estrogen and testosterone. Once I started the pellets, it came down, but my LDL never went to normal. Okay, so LDL, LDL is the bad one, the bad cholesterol. In other words, it's the one that predicts plaque on your blood vessels. Okay. Okay. So I lost six pounds. I did all the things I was supposed to do during this last year, and then I met with my cardiologist, and he said, "Well, your LDL is still elevated." And we did a specific test where we looked at the type of LDL, and it was the high-risk type. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, so the only thing to treat you with is a statin. So what do you want to do? And I said, mm, I don't want to take a statin. I've had a, a genetic test showing that if I take a statin, my muscle mass will break down, and I'll be okay, in pain. A statin is what? A statin is... Um, is a cholesterol, everybody else calls it a, a cholesterol medicine. Okay. Okay. They always end in statin, lovastatin, you know, one of, one of the statins. Simvastatin. Yeah. Those yeah. are all cholesterol lowering medications. So the side effect of those is that you could, if you genetically are at risk for it, break down muscle mass and hurt all the time. And if that's the case, you can't take a statin. So I, instead of trying it, I did the genetic test and it showed that I can't take a statin. Okay. Or I shouldn't take a statin because I'll have this side effect. So I said, mm, so what's my other choice? Mm -hmm. And he suggested a heart test, a CT, which is a, car, a, a computed tomography or CT scan of the heart to look for calcium. It's a calcium test of the heart. So I said, well. Like a calcium buildup inside yeah, the heart? Yeah, because calcium collects where you have plaque. Okay. So we can actually do an x-ray of the heart, but we have to do a CT scan. We can't just do a flat plate yeah. like one x-ray. We have to look all the way through the heart right. to see it, uh, to see if there's any calcium there. If there's nothing, then I don't have buildup and compromise of my arteries, meaning thinner arteries on my heart. So that means I don't have it anywhere else either. Right. So he said, if you don't have any buildup or if you have less than 20% 
narrowing of your blood vessels with this calcium, I wouldn't have to take the statin. Okay. He said the catch is you have to pay for the test. I thought, well, statins, I'm going to have to pay for the rest of my life. Right, because you're going to take them forever. I'll have to take them the rest of my life. So, and and I may be in pain, and I may have to go through lots and of even different if you're only ones. Paying the copay, right? You're still, still paying a lot. every month twenty, thirty bucks to three hundred dollars a year. Yeah, it's more so like ten years, fifteen years on statin, and that's only versus how much for a test. Right. So, so I said, well, if I can, you know, I know I'm not going to do great on statins. It's going to take a lot of adjustment and time. Why don't we look at this and, first? And doctor visits. And doctor visits. So we're going to look at this first. So, I I paid two hundred fifty dollars. To radiology and said and and got my scan so they won't read them to you but they know I'm a doctor and they won't give you the results right there right. they know I'm a physician so they said I said how'd it go and they said come in here and you look at it yourself oh, so they flip through all the pictures and there's no calcium so even though I had since I was in my 40s an elevated LDL I don't have it as plaque plaque doesn't just like go away it develops over time and, and it keeps collecting. If you're collecting plaque, then it just gets worse and worse. So without plaque, that means that even though I have cholesterol or one of the cholesterols that's elevated, it's not sticking to my vessels. It doesn't so matter. So then what does it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. You don't matter. have to worry about it at all. It's I'm not, not worried about that. It's not building up in your kidney or your liver or something. It's not building place. up anywhere. If it's not building up in my heart, right. it's not building so up anywhere. So it's just passing through. Right, you so use cholesterol. So your body doesn't break it down, or it, it creates it as a side effect of something, but it eliminates it? Cal uh, cholesterol is used to repair your brain. One of the side effects of, of taking a, a cholesterol-lowering medication is that you lower it too low, you can't repair your brain, you stop being able to think. You know, cholesterol, your brain's made of cholesterol, and to repair it when the cells break down, you have to have cholesterol in your bloodstream to do that. So that's why they say good versus bad cholesterol. There, You need kinds. all your cholesterol for that. You need the bad and the good. Okay. The, they're saying bad because that's the one they have linked in, in studies to heart disease. To heart disease. Okay. And the good one they've linked to, if you have a high HDL, that's the good one, then they've linked to protection from heart disease. Now, I don't have a high HDL, so I don't have that protection. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a high LDL. So it looked on paper like I should be collecting plaque on my blood vessels. And I'm not. Okay. So I took statins for years yes. because I had high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. My good cholesterol has always been good. Mm -hmm. My bad cholesterol was high. Mm -hmm. Then you started giving me testosterone pellets, mm -hmm. and now I don't have high cholesterol. Right. So, but but I didn't have the heart test. I don't. I'm, I don't have any heart issues mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. And my your blood pressure came down. Numbers are down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your cholesterol numbers are down. Right. Partially because testosterone does usually suppress cholesterol uh, numbers. Okay. It does feedback to the liver and shut down your production of overproduction of cholesterol. Not all of it, just overproduction. It allows you to have the okay. good, have enough cholesterol to take care of yourself. So you didn't need the statins after testosterone. Right. That's very common. And usually there's some weight loss involved and you get muscle mass and yeah. you start feeling better and exercising more. So that all plays into lowering there. cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not 100%. There's some people that doesn't lower it like me, yet mm -hmm. still... I'm six. I'm sixty-one, and I don't have any plaque on my heart. That's pretty good. So I. So it's not all about cholesterol. You should look further. So so we come back to the do line. If if we're just measuring cholesterol, oh my God, you've got high cholesterol or you've got high LDL, you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Doctors need to look at that and make decisions about that. Like, mm -hmm. do you take a statin? And then the second thing there's they could check is to take this calcium test mm -hmm. and then there's a thing called homocysteine right that they evaluate what yes is that? homocysteine is a byproduct or a breakdown product of the b vitamins okay, okay? so homocysteine is a bad byproduct it actually causes soft plaque you can't see that on the on the uh CT calcium scan, scan. but it ca causes a soft plaque and causes blood clots so if you genetically make a lot of homocysteine, then more risk you are more clots. at risk for blood clots and plaque, and plaque. but they're soft plaque, mm -hmm. so it's still not good for your blood vessels. It still causes damage to your arteries, 
But it is not something that has been standard of care, meaning medicine hasn't figured this out yet. I've been testing it for over five years, maybe seven years on patients because no one else is. And it is, it's the factor that if we look at your cholesterol and we look at your inflammation, which, ha which is part of making plaque, and we don't look at homocysteine, you can still die of a heart attack. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, so I have to look at it and then prevent it. So how do you measure homocysteine? Is there a, it's test a blood that, test? And, and it just gives you that level in your blood. Right. And if you're if your level is high, we right. we start you on something called methyl B vitamins. And that B1 means B1 vitamins or B, B vitamins, range. but it's methyl B. All the B vitamins, but they're methylated because that's the step you genetically can't do. You can't prepare it for use. You can't put the methyl group on, so you can't use it in your body. So instead, you're building up this, so this byproduct that is causing you harm. So we give you methylated B vitamins, and you stop making that by byproduct. It's so, easy. So it turns off the manufacture of it in your system right. because you've created a substitute delivery. Right. And then you have enough so have that enough B it's not building up plaque. Uh, right. And, okay. you, it goes. The levels go down. So it, that's easy. That's really the easiest thing. B vitamins and folic acid, but that's a B, that's considered in the Bs. So right. those that one intervention is not expensive, is not a prescription, can save all those people who are who think they're fine and they're running marathons and then they Call, die call the heart attack. Yeah. because because of the homocysteine. Interestingly enough, Medicare won't pay for homocysteine tests. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean that there's and I find so many people with high homocysteine. It's mm -hmm. it's crazy, and I just put them on methyl B is, vitamins. Is it an extensive, expensive test? No, it's not the expensive. More, the more people who do it, the, the cheaper it gets yeah. because that's how the labs work. Right. But they won't pay for it. Yeah. It's an interesting world, but that's so that's the amazing. three the three things that can cause plaque on your blood vessels, which then leads to heart heart disease from narrowing of your blood vessels. Right. And clot and blood clots or fat clots is cholesterol plus inflammation because it takes inflammation to be the glue that sticks that cholesterol onto the wall of the vessel. Okay, so define more precisely inflammation. That's a swelling? Inflammation is um, if you have a joint that hurts uh -huh. and is swollen, it's inflamed. And is if it, it hurts because your joint hurts. doesn't have pain sensors. Like your skin has pain sensors. If something sticks me or burns me, there's a sensor there that picks that up and sends it to the Your joint has pain system. sensors. It, it does have pain yeah. sensors. Mm -hmm. then, then and it, the inflammation causes it to cause, hurt. That's what triggers And to those. swell. Because touching my skin isn't going to touch the sensor in the joint. No, the sensors are in every... The sensors for pain are in every... Part of, part of your, your body. body okay so if you have inflammation if you get a splinter in your hand yeah and it swells and it's red okay it will give your whole body inflammation wow i mean your body will pick that Cause up because the, the alarm goes off and your system says they sent it sends off. white cells yeah. and that's an inflammation and it's and it secretes um a substance that causes your whole body to have some inflammation circulating okay inflammatory cells so that is a system that was meant to help us past infection and um, and splinters and other. It, it helps us get better, yet it damages our blood vessels. So in people who have chronic infl uh, inflammation, in inflammatory issues, yeah. so like chronic infection or they have rheumatoid arthritis or some other autoimmune disease right. or they have obesity causes you to be inflamed. So if you're obese, then your the test we do is called CRP. The test that test will be elevated if you're obese. Right. So just that's, by itself. Just by itself. Yeah. Just because of the obesity. Yeah, and then if you have um, teeth that are infected or you haven't been to the, that's why you should see the dentist every six months. You should have your have your teeth cleaned. That decreases the inflammation that you have in your teeth. That's why you, we brush them every day. So when you're brushing your teeth and cleaning your gums and flossing, 
then you are preventing heart disease. Well, and dentists are promoting that information. They say that if you get regular dental care and floss on a regular mm -hmm. basis, you can add five years to your life expectancy mm -hmm. because you reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. It's true because that's where the primary inflammation is. Yeah. If we look all through the body, we'll find it most often in the mouth. Wow. So... So cholesterol your mouth is a nasty place. Yeah, cholesterol plus inflammation can cause plaque by itself mm -hmm. and homocysteine all by itself can cause plaque. And plaque means your blood vessel may have been this wide, now it's this wide, so you're not getting enough blood to your heart which works all the time. Okay. And needs oxygen all the time. If you don't get if you don't get oxygenated blood to your heart, you get a heart attack which is damage to the muscle of the heart. Okay, and then that muscle dies and your heart doesn't pump. Doesn't you go rebuild. into heart failure. So that's that's the process. So if your cholesterol is not, I mean, if you don't have high cholesterol or you have high cholesterol and you don't have any plaque and, and your homocysteine is fine, then then you're, you're low risk. So when you get damage to your heart muscle, is that the reason why they put in pacemakers? No, that's a whole that's different a whole thing. Electrical system. Pacemaker is is electricity. This is a pump. This is plumbing. Okay. okay. <laughs> so plumbing right. versus electricity. Yeah. Not pacemaker, the same risk issues. Yeah, that, it's a whole different thing. Pacemaker is something that gives you the heart beat. So, so you talked about three basic subsets of data that a physician who knows you should look at to predict your risk for mm -hmm. stroke and heart. But there are some other concerns that they also then need to discuss with you. Right. Uh, one is genetics, although genetic testing isn't paid for right now by insurance, mm -hmm. so you'd have to come up with that. But you can get genetics to say, am I at risk for heart disease? Seriously. Right. You know, and mine, and mine said no, which right. was another reason why when I did that testing. Why you didn't take the statins. Why I didn't take the statins, because right. it said I'm not, a, you know, my genetics didn't show that I was at risk. Right. And then the other thing is diet and exercise. Diet and exercise. Because obesity is a trigger for inflammation. Right. Obesity is a standalone contributor for, for heart, heart risk. disease. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that should be discussed as well. And usually, the doctor usually, I mean, we usually say, "Oh, and lose weight and walk out." <laughs> That's how <laughs> but, they discuss it. But not how to lose, not how to lose weight, and what are you eating that you shouldn't be eating? And you know, right. sometimes you have to bring in a food diary, and that would be a great thing and a fast thing for your doctor to look down instead yeah. of just saying, "What do you eat for breakfast? What do you eat for lunch?" You know, just bring it in. They can tell you what your problem foods are. Yeah. So. Diet, exercise are very important to heart disease. Mm -hmm. You can't just sit around with a lovely cholesterol and no inflammation and do no exercise and think your heart muscle is going to be healthy. It isn't. You have to exercise. Even though I admit and confess, I hate exercising for no reason. I, You know, like, no reason being I'm not playing tennis, I'm not walking the dog, I'm not doing something else with it. Yes. It just is, I still do it. <laughs> Because I want my heart to be healthy. I don't want to be out of breath going up the stairs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be out of breath taking long walks. Well, and that's why a lot of people who have sedentary jobs are switching to stand-up desks right. and treadmill desks. <laughs> then they I mean, end up in the so ER when they fall off the treadmill desk. So, you know, you have to watch that, too. You have to have really good <laughs> yeah, balance a for treadmill desks. But yeah. even if you get up at lunchtime and instead of eating a big old lunch, right. you eat a snack or a small lunch and then you go out and walk around the block or the building. Or don't ride the elevator. Walk the yeah. steps everywhere you can or run as the, often as you and can. And run the steps. I used yeah. to take my heels off right. at St. John's to go deliver a baby. I'd take my heels off and ruin my hose or because we wore them then. And I'd run up the stairs, the flights of stairs, mm -hmm. to wherever I was going, usually labor and delivery, and then I'd put my heels back on and then walk down the hall. But I'd run in bare feet because you can't run in heels, but I'd right. run up the stairs. That was great exercise. So, I mean, you can do it <laughs> if you think about it, but you got to think about it and you've got to want to do it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to keep your heart muscle strong, just as if you were lifting weights. Aerobic exercise is keeping your heart muscle strong. You can even fast walk, and you can do that with your dog, which would then be a twofer, and the dog gets healthier. So uh, that that's a very a very good exercise. Well, and you, you can ignore all of this and do whatever you do, and run your <laughs> weight and eat your food and smoke your cigarettes and don't exercise. Oh and yeah, cigarettes. Be cavalier, and you can still win the lottery. I mean, you can get a replacement heart. They have some. They oh, don't. my goodness. People are donors, and you can get one. 
but you got to get past the uh, morbidity board at the hospital, the transplant board, because then they evaluate how many kids you have, well, how's your life contributed, are you important, were you vice president? You know, you can get a new heart if you haven't taken care getting of Getting a new heart isn't like what it sounds like to you. Getting a new heart is like getting a new organ from anybody. You have to take anti-rejection drugs, right. which make you swell, which means you're on steroids, which may, means you're swollen and obese. And, and I mean, it's, it's not a, always a great thing. it's an thing. always and forever thing you have to continue doing. Right. So it's it's not a it's good not a out. It's not free win. But I, I used to hear. It's better being dead. I don't hear. I, don't, I didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> I, I used to tell, you know, I used to tell patients that, um, they could do whatever they wanted to, but then I ended up picking up the pieces yeah. when they gained more and more and more weight, right. you know, and then they were miserable. And so they're like, what do I do? So, so I don't say that anymore. And my patients are very motivated now. The patients I see are like, I want to get better. Oh, yeah. I want to be healthy. I want to eat right. I want to exercise right. I just need direction. And what frustrates I, that's why I love my practice is that, you know, from your practice that there are, Critical junctures where if you intervene at mm -hmm. this point with the right thing, mm -hmm. you wipe off the board a whole lot of diseases and illnesses mm -hmm. that people are going to come into if they don't act at this point. Mm -hmm. And you know that and you practice that and you see that and your patients benefit mm -hmm. from it, but you can't convince yet all the other doctors or the insurance companies or the FDA to look at that data and say, this is worth doing. Well, it's for, still suspect. For example, when I was in just a GYN practice, I was treating people who were pre-diabetics mm -hmm. with metformin. They were they clearly didn't have diabetes yet. They were gaining weight. They couldn't lose weight. They were craving sh sugars. And they, they had an insulin that was elevated. I did the testing. And they were pre-diabetic or insulin resistant, another name for it. We used to call it hypoglycemic. But we now know that that's an entry point for diabetes. If you can use the drug metformin to help them not crave, lose weight, and get their their uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is an average of their blood sugar, down, then you can you can pull them back from the cliff of falling over and getting diabetes, so they won't get it. Right. I used to do that all the time, and people would go to their primary doctor, and their doctor would go, oh, I don't know why she's doing this. I don't get this. This is just ridiculous. You don't have diabetes. Go off that medication. Then I'd be fighting with them. Right. So I'm the gynecologist saying, you don't want diabetes, do you? Yeah. Do this and eat this and, and exercise, and their doctor's going, ah, it's not necessary. Now, it is standard of care. So That was 10 years ago. So the message here is that you have to be an informed participant <laughs> and an activist in pursuit of your own health care, which means that you also have to be informed and active about what you eat and how you exercise, but also in what you know about risk factors and communicating with your doctor and having a relationship with your doctor where you can say, um, wait a minute, I have some questions I need to get answered. Or defend right. yourself and say, I'm trying to prevent disease in the future. Yeah. I'm staying on this because I'm I'm going to prevent getting diabetes. Well, and the iceberg is moving in the direction of preventive care. It's mm -hmm. not there yet, but that's the, the next turning point for the Leviathan. Mm -hmm. We hope and pray. Yeah, that, it looks like they're turning that way, but it's going to take a while. It is. So please be informed. Please be active. Talk to your doctor. Take care of yourself. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.